Hi guys, it's Chris Cartledge here for DJ Tech Tools and today we've got a little something for you Ableton Live users. Uh, I'm going to be looking at some intermediate and advanced functions of the launch controls and follow actions which will allow us to do some slicing up and live remixing as well as some organic on the fly beat chopping. Okay, so here we are, blank canvas, brand new Ableton Live file and we're in the clip view. First thing I'm going to do is drag in a clip into an available clip slot. And we double click it, you can see it's a standard drum loop. And if we press play, I know that two things are going to happen. The first thing that's going to happen is that the clip's going to get triggered. And the second thing that's going to happen is that the launch is actually going to time itself with the global quantize, which we can see up here in the transport, and that's at one bar. So when I press it, it's going to start the time running. And now every time I press it, it will just queue up the action for every bar although I can see that really this feels like an 80 ppm loop Ableton Live has brought it in at 160 so if we just half that and at the same time drop the BPM there we've 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 got the loop back and it's a two bar loop so as you can see we get a bar every time if I drag in some more loops uh, the same thing's going to happen because Ableton's default launching behavior is always the same and it's always that things get launched as they trigger and they'll launch with the global quantization. We can get some really interesting stuff if we change that behavior though and in order to change that behavior what we need to do is come down into these clip properties and click on this rather innocuous looking L and that brings up the launch box and we can change all sorts of things that allow us to do some really cool stuff. Uh, the first thing that you see is we can change the launch mode. It's set to trigger and for most uses we're probably going to leave it on trigger. Uh, we can see the, the gate toggle and repeat options which you'll probably be fairly familiar with if you're familiar with ever having heard them before but just to quickly recap. Triggers the default, you press the button and it triggers it. Gate, you press and it triggers, then while it's held down, you get sound. As soon as you release it, it stops it again. Toggle is press once to trigger it, press again to stop it. And repeat is slightly different, and what it will do is whilst the button is held down, it will continue to re-trigger itself. And that will depend on what the quantize setting is set to. As I say, we're going to leave it on trigger. You'll probably want to leave it on trigger most of the time. It never hurts to experiment with a variety of different things and there will be cool stuff that it's uh, it's really good for. If we have clips being launched then by default they're going to launch on their start point so we can see a start point here. If we click the legato button then they will actually launch and inherit the timing that the clip that was being played previously to it had. So this means that if you've got a as you can see here, we've got four four bar loops, four two bar loops, I should say. And if one of them gets to the beginning of bar two, when we switch to the next track, if legato's off, doesn't matter. It's just going to start again from the beginning of bar one. If legato's on, it's going to pick up from bar two. Now, this is really important because it means that we can do some pretty cool stuff. So let's uh, let's do this all in one. Now, don't forget, you can select multiple clips by clicking on one, shift at the end, and you can see that it gives us the launch box still, and the legato is half on and half off because we've got some that are and some that aren't. We just turn it on so that everything's on. That means that all of these now will play legato. So if we go to one of these, you'll see that that jumped in on bar two. If we turn the quantize off entirely, then you see what we're doing? And we just literally jump in between the clips as we go. Okay, so you can probably see where we're going with this now. Say you've got those four, maybe you've got 40, maybe you've got 400. I don't know if you'd be able to get 400, actually, your computer might start choking. But um, what you can do is load those in, drop them. 
doesn't matter where you are, you'll always be in time and you'll always be on beat, which is really cool. Wouldn't it be even cooler though if we could automate that so that we've got different drum breaks that will just drop in and be constantly organic and constantly unpredictable, but constantly on time as well. And of course we can do that by doing what we call follow actions. Now a follow action is uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's what the clip does once it's been triggered. So as you can see, once we've triggered the clip, okay, it's going to follow the global quantization. We could change that if we wanted to to uh, anything that we can do in the in the main quantization, so that we could have like a battery of of clips that play by their own rules, even though everything else played by the main set of rules. That can be handy. But once that's happened, what happens next? And here we have the timing. So this is saying this is going to take place one bar after. If we wanted that to be a little bit less, if we wanted that to be no bars, that goes bars beat sixteenths. So say we wanted two sixteenths, one eighth. And in that time, we want, we can see no action. We can say we want the clips to stop, play again, go to the next or last, or any or other. Now this is the one we're interested in here. We want any, because if we set it to any, it means that any of these clips could be selected next. Normally, of course, there's no follow action, so the clip's just left to its own devices. But if we change it so that instead of no follow action, any clip is now triggered. It means that there's just as much chance of any other clip as the same clip being re-triggered again. Now you can see that there's room for two follow actions and the number at the bottom is a ratio for how often one happens compared to the other. So if I whack this up to 999 to zero, that just means that it's gonna happen. We could just, I could have left this at one to zero. If I'd have set it to 999 to one, it means that one in every thousand times there will have been no follow action instead of the follow action. And play. And as you can see, we're getting an organic, constantly changing drum break. This works with MIDI clips as well. So if you've got four different MIDI clips triggering a drum synth or whatever, then you're going to be able to get that as well. Imagine you've got a bass line synth being triggered by four different uh, MIDI clips, or even imagine that you've got uh, two different breaks with huge basses, and double dropping was just a little bit too busy. So you could actually set this up so that organically and randomly, you're going to get a new bass line every time you play. Okay, so. That's just one of the uses that we can use for these new launch modes and new follow actions. Okay, now let's say that we wanted to use the same principles to do some live remixing of some beats. Okay, so uh, I've found a loop that I like. Uh, let's just crop it to make it a little bit easier to work with. I've just got the one bar to make it nice and easy. If we were to chop this one bar into eight eighths, we'd be able to play with it nice and easily across uh, a MIDI controller. So what I'm going to do is duplicate this clip and you can do that with the shortcut which is your command button and D uh, or you can right click and do it like that. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we've got eight of these. Uh, what we can do is change the start point on each of them. So by the way, this isn't something you want to do mid set. This is for when you prepare sets really. This is when the most power comes out of it. The first one, we're going to start on the first beat like normal. And then the second one, we're going to drag it over to the second eighth, the third one, the third eighth, the fourth one, the fourth, and so on and so forth until we've got each of the eighths in the bar on each one of the clips. One eighth note later than the last. And finally, this one here. Now, what we're going to do is if I select all of these again, we want to do the follow action and we want to make it go now to the next 
in the line and we're going to do an eighth again so it's definitely going to happen and this time we're going to leave the legato mode off because we've actually changed the start point on the samples manually so now if we do everything we're going to go all the way down to the end but this one at the very end is just going to send it into a blank spot so we don't want that we want to change that one to first so what we did was select every single one and make it go next and then manually at the end select this one to make it go down to the first okay so if we press play now you'll hear and see that what's happening is the clips are cycling through uh, now we could do that with any number of clips, any number of things, and because we've, uh, what I've done is uh, midied up, if we go to the MIDI, you'll see that I've actually connected these up to my MIDI controller. So if I really wanted to, I can... Okay. and that will just do whatever it wants now we can set up our Ableton live sets to do any number of weird and wonderful things and safe in the knowledge that we can set a project up and it will just be that project and nothing else has to uh, get transferred we can make things as intricate and weird and wonderful and sometimes making sets that are based around using cool techniques will sort of jog your brain into doing something a little bit cool. Um, so we've got those two techniques there using the launch mode and follow actions. Okay, that's it for now. Uh, don't forget, you can go to djtechtools.com. The uh, link will be in the description and you'll be able to read out uh, some written instructions for what we've got. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this and found it inspirational.